I'm here with Catherine and with Chris. Hello. And they're from Decoded, and they do very cool stuff around helping improve the digital literacy of the world, basically, and encouraging people to go out and code and learn all the important stuff. And I'm going to talk very briefly about all the emerging tech stuff that's going on, how to encourage people to get into development for it, and that side of stuff. Um, to start with, coding is still pretty niche as a skill, as you mentioned in your keynote. Yeah. Um, what is it about coding that keeps people from being drawn to it, in your opinion? And yeah, yours as well. Kick off on yeah. that one. Yeah, the tiny Hi. Yeah, we've got tiny little <laughs> yeah. My name's Catherine. I'm, I'm uh, one of the founders. And uh, one of the kind of mission statements um, that kind of got us started, I think, with Decoded was exactly that, mm. what you just talked about. The fact that um, why is it that this thing, which is impacting everything, all our lives, all our behaviors, but even more fundamentally, every single economy is being radically transformed by technology. In the beginning of the conference, it's really interesting to look at um, how technology is increasingly becoming a significant sector within mm. the Australia's economy. And, but yet, when you look at who owns this skill set, and it, it's very, very small, it's very exclusive. And you know, even if you just go even higher than that, forget the programmers and developers and data scientists, how many people can call themselves confident mm. or digitally literate um, then it's, it's tiny, it's minuscule. And that number, those two numbers need to change quite radically. We need more developers, data scientists, coders within all walks of life, whether it's yeah. government, um, healthcare, um, technology even. Um, but we also need leadership, uh, like government, uh, the boards of all these big mm. companies, um, and, and the people even project managing big developer teams to feel um, like they've got the vocabulary skills and confidence to, to make those decisions. Why has that happened? Why hasn't, why isn't it like much bigger than it is? I think uh, for me and what, I mean, you, you might have some different opinions, Chris, but I think that it's, I like breaking down a lot of the myths and the cliches and the stereotypes and mm. the imagery that make people feel like, oh, that's not for me. Yeah. And especially, as a woman, I feel that all of it is very off-putting, mm. potentially to women, when actually this is a place where they can be excellent. Yeah. And um, I, I, I desperately want to see more CVs from female developers landing on our desks. Mm -hmm. Even though we're quite lucky, we've got about 50% um, gender equality within the business. Yeah. Um, we want to keep it that way as we grow. Yeah. Uh, but over to Chris. But yeah, firstly, on that gender equality one, any uh, female developers out there who think they want to come and teach people about coding, then please email us. Uh, quick plug, <laughs> sydneyatdecoded.com. Get in touch. Uh, we are desperate to hear from you. Um, because, yeah, as Catherine said, globally it's about 50%, but over here in Sydney, we're a bit male heavy. So, uh, anyone, please do get in touch. Anyway, what was the question? I got, sorry, oh, I, I got excited by women. Yeah, question. we can move to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've covered that one pretty well. Um, I'll continue it on to. For both of you, what area in emerging technology, everything from virtual reality to artificial intelligence, what most excites you? What do you think is going to be you know, the big, really kind of, I guess, ecosystem changing of all of them? Which is a tough question, but you know. It's not going to be about one technology. It's about mm -hmm. the fact that they're all now working together. So virtual reality combined with smartphones is exciting. Yeah. It's not just about virtual reality. It's about virtual reality get into everyone's hands. And then it's about the platform nature of smartphones that's democratizing development and allowing us to innovate so much more quickly. So, mm -hmm. And it's also the Internet of Things is itself not exciting without machine learning. Without So mm -hmm. it's not one thing that you can say, all right, we've invented this, so that therefore we now have the future. It's mm -hmm. the fact that we are at a point where we've got ubiquitous connected. We've, everyone carries a powerful computer around in their pocket. And we've got the, uh, the optics of virtual reality, and we've got the science of machine learning. That's all coming together. And we've got drones, which are yes. cool. uh, And right. that's all coming together <laughs> in the perfect storm. That's yeah. why it's the next industrial revolution. There's no one thing that's made it happen. It's, it's the tsunami that's about to hit us of everything working yeah. together. Excellent. It's a cop out, but all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually think that's the right answer. So it's good. I actually probably would have said a very similar thing. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go in there and say VR. <laughs> but I was such a VR nerd. I, I, I first saw it with Oliver Stone did this film called Wild Palms, like mm. back in the 80s. So the fact that it's becoming like 
that sci-fi world's becoming a bit of a yeah. reality now is a bit of a, a geek out moment. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Catherine can talk about VR all day. Yeah, so I'll yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, for Catherine in particular, but you can also speak to it because you mentioned it briefly with yours. Um, You've talked about how bringing women into the future is going to be really important in a world which is completely going to be just revolving around technology and how there isn't quite as many women in the area as there should be. There have been, especially in VR, um, I've got a bunch of people who I chat with and people I've interviewed over in Seattle and stuff who've yeah. run VR hackathons and stuff. And there are literally you know, only a small fraction of women. So I wanted to see, from your perspective and also from yours, what can they do to kind of build up the, I guess, participation for women? Do you have any tips on how do we get them in there? I think, um, I think it's changing, mm. and that's making me quite excited. But uh, by no means is the kind of campaign, I think, for uh, encouraging women to just consider this as somewhere where they could be incredible. Yeah. Uh, they could either be an incredible developer, um, data scientist or VR designer, yeah. um, or they could be a CEO of a technology company. And just kind of opening up that um, possibility, I think, is very, very important in painting a picture of it, what it looks like. It's a bit of a you know, a vicious circle. So mm. when you go along to the VR hackathon and there aren't any girls there, and if you're a girl and you go along to check it out, you're like, but there are no girls here. Mm. And what, what's wrong with this yeah. place? But I like to paint a picture of it being important for two reasons, which I think is economic. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to everything that you were just talking about, Chris, um, you know, our worlds are going to be um, absolutely driven by technology. Uh, every economy is going to become a digital economy. And I want women to have the option of getting the best jobs that exist out yeah. there and just having as many options as possible. So um, creating that opportunity, making it a place where women feel welcome mm. and they can see other role models and mentors within it. And from a developer point of view, uh, I mean, I, I mentioned in the, uh, in the keynote that reading through Stack Overflow's developer survey, mm. 55,000 people responded to that survey. Less than 6% were female. And um, I know that that's, not, um, that's more representative of their survey than nece necessarily mm. the kind of national averages. But um, if these products are impacting all our lives and uh, we're using them every day and they're solving problems that we need solved, mm. I want them to be solving female problems born from a place of female insight. I want some of those lines of code to be written by women um, because it's becoming the world around us, which is yeah. why I kind of talk about the future being written in lines of code. Yeah, I think it, the, the way, the, well, first of all, the why it's important. I, as a 30 year old, I know the next 30 years are going to be driven by technology. I don't want to be living age 60 with my kids growing up in a world that's been designed by men, yeah. uh, solely by men. <laughs> I think that, you know, that's not, that's not a good world. We drive for diversity in business because we know that diverse businesses perform better yeah. because they can bring two different viewpoints. So it's so important that we try and do it. In terms of how, um, I think there needs to be great education. So it's so easy to um, create a workplace that is male driven when that workplace is already male driven. Yeah. So that, you know, the, the cues for, for the lose and stuff, these things. So really getting people to spend the time to learn about how they can design design their application processes yeah. to appeal to the right people. It's mm. not about quotas, it's about education because yeah. people, people want this diversity. No one is sitting there saying, I want an all male business. It's, yeah. it's mad. Uh, they and want it to is do it. about diversity, it's not, it's I not think just it's, gender as well. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. all walks of life. I think apprenticeships are absolutely key in this yeah. area. It's something we're really passionate about in the UK in the London office. We take on two apprentices every single year from diverse backgrounds, mm. which is amazing. Brilliant. It's a great way to pull people into it. Um, and it's about designing environments. So our teaching environments, when we're teaching this stuff, we, I guess if you were talking about a stereotypically female environment, our environments would lean maybe towards that. They are mm -hmm. open, they're spaces that make everyone feel comfortable they're coming into. Yeah. Um, and I think that's absolutely important in the way you design your business from the top all the way down. Perfect. Cool. And then from your perspective, Chris, now that you're running part of Decoded and having to bring people in and get them to learn all this new stuff, do you have any tips 
for people who are already out there who've kind of got a little bit of developer experience, but they kind of want to do bigger things. They see all of the you know exciting Internet of Things or virtual reality or this link that's kind of speaking to them, but they're not sure where to start. What advice would you give them in how to kind of jump into emerging tech and start doing things? Get a project. Don't try and learn stuff by rote. It's pointless. Uh, if you speak to almost all the developers at Decoded are self-taught. I think we've got mm. a computer scientist, yeah. maybe two, uh, in the busy, you know, globally in there, a hundred of us who are uh, yeah. business worldwide. Uh, all of us learned to develop in all of this new stuff because we go, I wanted to build that. And the same yeah. as the way I, le I learned Unity, I learned how to create stuff in Unity because I wanted to build a virtual reality, it was really boring, it's data visualization, but That's VR, exciting. VR data you know things, I mean? it's like <laughs> virtual reality scatter plots, they're the future. So um, our data is VR. Yeah, 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 yeah it was, I took, that was, awesome. that was my Christmas I project. Uh, and I came back to the office like, guys, I've done VR, I can build this stuff. And they're like, have you made a game? No, cool. it's a scatter chart, uh, but it, it's awesome. Um, yeah. And so get a project and then Google it, like you've got, everyone's knowledge and every, there's so many tutorials mm. that are out there once you've got a little bit of knowledge uh, you know go and hack something together it might not be the best that's going to be made but build something and then learn more and more and more and there's communities and people will help so yep. get a project and go google it and yep. that, that's kind of it really and, and i kind of and i think it's really interesting hold hackathons i mean i, I know that that's mm. what you're going to be doing here in australia bringing the community together with those projects in mind mm -hmm. um and just great stuff, great learning happens when you mm. bring people together and just in, in that really informal kind of grassroots way, I sometimes think some of the most powerful stuff happens in, in those places. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just get people in a room uh, and yeah, whether that's a virtual room, so whether that's uh, online and people talking or whether that's actually get people together with pizza and beer and getting to build mm. stuff uh, as a team. Sorry, I'm getting you to hold my microphone. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's cool. All right, well, Last question is the nice open-ended one, where I just get to say what final bits of wisdom would you like to leave developers out there? If you could just say one thing for each of you to developers right now. Come on, be a recruitment drive. Yes. Uh, if you <laughs> get vaguely inspired by anything we're talking about and want to take technology to other people, then please do get in touch. Chris at decoded.com. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So thank you. Perfect. I'd say um, take people on the journey with you because um, never underestimate how scared everyone else feels about the impact of technology upon their lives and you are their guides. Um, and so uh, be gentle, be kind and uh, take them on the journey with you. Cool, thank you guys for awesome. taking the time. Thank you very much. <laughs>